Good morning, scholars. Today is Wednesday, April 15th. This is our final lesson in Unit 7. Uh, tomorrow will be our Unit 7 assessment. And then starting next week on Monday, we're moving on to something brand new, um, graphing and coordinate planes, which I'm really excited about. As always, I want to start out with some shout outs for 100%, and I cannot wait to show you the leaderboard for who has the most Vista virtual points, who is uh, working their way towards earning maybe that surprise pizza party, um, getting to host their own Zoom room, dance parties, movie parties, so many exciting things. So, can't wait to take a look at that. Let's start with our shout outs for 100%. Um, you can see kind of a sad representation from you, but huge shout out to Latasia and Dillery. There were quite a few UNC scholars who got five out of six. Um, not bad, not bad, but did want to highlight these two scholars uh, for getting 100%. SCU, huge list as always. Uh, Philip, Adam, Alejandra, Amelia, Danya, Corday, Aiden, Michelle, Jakira, Nevea. SCU is crushing it. Nice work, SCU. And from Duke, we have Danny, Monica, Diana, and Tatiana. Nice work, Duke, as well. All of these scholars earned um, many points, both for completing their assignments on time as well as for academic excellence. Everybody who turned in their assignments um, by last night, so on time, earned that point for, assess or for assignment completion. If you got a five out of six or a six out of six, you got those extra two additional points for academic excellence. You'll see those in your account as well. As a reminder, these are some of the things that top earners of Vista Virtual Points can earn. So I'm excited to share just how many points everybody has in one second. But remember that you are working towards earning being a host for a day, an assignment pass, so a day where you don't have to do any of your assignments, um, a lunch bunch, a virtual dance party or movie party, um, and of course the most coveted prize, everybody who is earning, uh, or for every point you earn, you do get to put that ticket into um, a raffle, one for every point you have um, on Friday. Uh, so just a couple days from now, we'll be drawing a name out of that hat to see who wins the special pizza delivery to your house. Excited to see that. Yesterday, there were so many scholars who came to reteach, who came to office hours, scholars going above and beyond showing their core values, all earning those points as well. All right, let's take a look at who is in the lead. So starting with the Hadley campus, um, we have in first place Manuel who with already 20 points. Take a look, see if you can find your name. That means a Manuel will get 20 tickets to add to the raffle. A Naira will get 17. Plus, of course, there's uh, points for being one of the top five highest, the top 10 highest, the top highest. So take a look at how many points you have. We have quite a few scholars over 10. Looks like our top 10 right now um, stops right here at Giovanna. Shout out to all of these scholars. Scholars who are in the nines, um, in eights, and sevens. Make sure you're earning more points today. If you are down there with no points or one point or two points or three points, this is a chance to step it up. Make sure you're submitting all of those assignments. Make sure you're showing that academic excellence. Come to office hours. Come to reteach. Um, all of these great opportunities to earn points. But for every point you have, that's one ticket you get to put in the raffle. Um, so really excited to see who wins. Nice work, Hadley. And then a quick look at the Maryvale leaderboard. Um, Maryvale, you guys don't have quite as many points as Hadley. Um, a huge shout out um, to our first place winner, Madeline, with 15 points. Nice work. One other scholar, Monica, over 10. Um, wow, that's 15 raffle tickets, Madeline, you get to put into the raffle. Um, quite a few scholars with um, six or four or three. Looks like our top 10 ends right here with Yasmin. And then Maryville, you guys have quite a few scholars with zero points. So your um, goal today should be everybody should be earning points. You get them for completing assignments. You get them for showing academic excellence. You get them for going to office hours. You get them for coming to reteach. As a reminder, when you come to office hours and reteach, you need to have your video turned on. There's just no way to have a conversation and help you with your math if you don't have your video turned on. So make sure you're coming with that video turned on, 
ready to go. But again, huge, huge shout out to um, our top earners, especially Emmanuel with 20 points already. Cannot wait to see what happens today, who is earning those points today. Uh, and we'll take a look at our winners um, or our top leaders tomorrow. All right, and now diving into our math. Today we are going to be doing six review problems of different types. We're gonna be doing these together. Then you'll have six very similar problems to do on your own. Uh, final review, final day of multiplying and dividing fractions. It's not, sorry, not fractions, uh, decimals. Tomorrow is your test. So tomorrow you'll have a very short video with directions of how to log in um, to your Illuminate uh, account to take that test. And then um, we'll be starting something brand new. So make sure you have your scrap paper ready. Make sure you have your pencil ready to go. Everybody is solving these problems along with me. Hint that your questions, both on your independent practice today and on your test tomorrow, are going to look really, really similar. So scholars who are solving along with me, who are answering all their questions um, today, taking great notes are going to do really, really well, both on your independent practice today and on your um, test tomorrow. So let's dive right in. Let's go ahead and take a look at problem number one. Go ahead and set it up on your scrap paper. Take 30 more seconds. All right, let's check in and see what we got. Now, I chose to set mine up with a standard algorithm. You may have just said, I already know six times four. I don't even need to do that. After multiplying using the standard um, algorithm, I got to an answer of 24, but I knew that wasn't my final answer because I had one, two digits um, after the decimal point um, in one of my factors. So I had to move the decimal point in my product over two places to get to an answer of 24 hundreds. If you got an answer of 24 hundreds as well, go ahead and grab out a pen, a marker, um, a crayon, anything you like to use to check. We're going to be checking all of our work today and give yourself a check. Nice work. All right, moving on. These multiplication ones we're getting really good at, so I should see some really strong answers with multiplying decimals. All right, question number two. Here we have a multiple choice question. Let's read it carefully and make sure we're carefully evaluating which one would be the best choice. So the question asks, which expression shows a correct strategy and product for the expression shown? Okay, so I'm looking at my expression shown right here, and I see it's a decimal times a decimal, six tenths times four tenths. So I do know how to calculate that. Um, but I'm also noticing that I, I'm not just looking for the answer in a decimal. I'm actually looking for which of these fractions um, would be the equivalent um, amount. So let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and just jot down on my paper six tenths times four tenths. And then I'm gonna think about how I could convert those to fractions because I see every one of my choices um, is giving me uh, an option with fractions. So on our scrap paper, let's go ahead and rewrite this as fractions. The great thing about turning decimals into fractions is that when you say the decimals, you're basically saying the fractions. So six tenths times Four tenths, go ahead and write your fraction, All right, luckily I remember uh, we had spent so long um, back in January and a little bit of February working on multiplying fractions, I remember exactly what to do. I remember that I need to first multiply my numerator and then multiply my denominator. 
go ahead and do that. And now let's take a look at our multiple choices. All right, so we found the product here. All right, I'm gonna take a look at choice A. Six tenths times four tenths, that matches what I have, equals 24 tenths. All right, when I first glance at this, this looks, this looks good. Six times four is 24. But wait a second, this choice does not multiply the denominators. This is one of those ones where it's just there to trick you. Um, this would be more like if I was adding fractions where we add our numerators but don't touch the denominators, but this is not going to be correct when multiplying. It does not match what I got. Um, that cannot be correct. Let's take a look at choice B. All right, six hundredths. Oh, wait a second, right off the bat, I don't have six hundredths. I have six tenths. So I know that that's not gonna be correct either. Um, so I'm just gonna disregard that one. Even, I also know 100 times 10 is not going to be 100. Put an X by that one. Choice C, six tenths times four tenths. Okay, this matches um, what I got when I turned my decimals into fractions and equals 20, 10 twentieths. No, nobody should have picked this one. This is a mistake that probably a scholar who doesn't go to Vista College Prep may have made, where they would have added um, 6 plus 4 to get 10 and 10 plus 10 to get 20. Not at all how we multiply fractions. So let's take a look at our final choice. 6 tenths plus 4 tenths equals 24 hundredths. Well, when I multiplied this out, I said 6 times 4 is 24, and 10 times 10 is 100. And so this matches exactly the, the um, expression I have in choice D, 6 tenths times 4 tenths equals 2,400. So my correct answer is D. If you got an answer of D, go ahead and give yourself a check. Nice work. All right. Moving on to question three. Question three is asking, which expression is equal to 24 and 25 hundredths divided by four and five tenths? But before I set up a huge big seven and do a whole bunch of work to actually divide this, I'm looking at my choices and I'm noticing that it's not actually asking me to find the quotient, it's just asking me to find an equivalent expression. This is great news because we're so good at finding equivalent expressions. So let's go ahead and jot down uh, the original problem on our scrap paper. And now I'm gonna look through my choices to see which one is equivalent. I know in order for it to be equivalent, I need to move the decimal place, the decimal point, the same number of place values. So take a second to find the equivalent expression and write down the letter. Let's check back in. <clears throat> when I was thinking about this problem, I thought, well, there's more than one equivalent expression I could have written. I know it's equivalent if I move the decimal point the same number of times in my dividend and in my divisor. So the first thing I did is I moved the decimal point just one place. I moved it over one place in my dividend and one place in my divisor. This gave me an expression of 242 and 5 tenths divided by 45. That's one equivalent expression. I go over and I check my um, 
my multiple choice choices. And I see that, that is choice A. That seems like it's gonna be a really good choice. Then I just wanna double check. I also know another way I could create an equivalent expression is if I move the decimal point two places. This would completely get rid of all decimals. So I could have moved it one, two places in 24 and 25, 24 and 25 hundredths, meaning I would also have to move it over two places turning my four and five tenths into 450. So another equivalent expression would be 2,425 divided by 450. But I'm looking at my choices and that's not one of my choices. When I look at choice D, at first it kind of looks the same, but then I realize, oh no, this is not the same because here we move the decimal point two place values in the dividend, but only one in the divisor, making it not equivalent. So I know that my only correct multiple choice answer for an equivalent expression is in fact the one that matches 242 and 5 tenths divided by 45, which is of course choice A. If you had written down choice A, nice work, go ahead and give yourself a check. All right, rocking and rolling, halfway done. Let's take a look at question number four. All right, question four, straight division problem. What is the quotient? Go ahead and set it up on your scrap paper. I'm already thinking about how I can write my equivalent expression and then divide. Go ahead and do your work. All right, let's check in with just our equivalent expressions. I wanted to get this decimal point out of the way, so I moved it over one place value from three tenths, which means I needed to move my decimal one place over in six. This gave me a new expression of 60 divided by three. I didn't get tricked, I didn't accidentally put a zero at the end of that 30 because I'm only moving my decimal one place just to turn that three tenths into three. One place over, fill that hole with a zero. And so I didn't even need a big seven for this one because I just know that 60 divided by three, I know six divided by three is two, so 60 divided by three is 20. If you got 20, go ahead and give yourself a check. Has anyone gotten all four out of four correct? If you did, you are in phenomenal shape as we think about um, both your independent practice today and then your test tomorrow. Nice work, two more to go. Let's take a look at question five. I'm kind of running out of room down here, so I'm gonna move up to the top of my page so I can set up question number five. Let's take a look. All right, question number five. All right, which choice best completes this statement? If 21 times 46 equals 966, then two and one tenth times 46 equals, okay. A couple different ways I could think about this. I know enough about place value that I realize the difference between 21 and two and one tenth, and I can use that to get to my new answer. If you're not quite sure, you could always go ahead and multiply. Go ahead and solve this one on your scrap paper. Some of you may be able to do it just by recognizing the difference in where the decimal point goes, using some estimation, thinking about the difference between 21 times 46, and two times 46, but if you're stuck, multiply it out. Go ahead and solve.
Let's check in and see what we got. First thing I thought of was, okay, 21 times 46 is 996. I know two and one tenth times 46, it's gonna have the exact same digits. So I know when I multiply decimals, I can kind of pretend the decimal isn't there for a second and then put it back in, which means the digits would again be 966. And then because I have one digit after the decimal point, I needed to move my decimal point over one place. This also matches with my estimate. If I, I know that two times 46 is going to be quite a bit smaller than 21 times 46. So I knew I couldn't move my decimal point this way and add more zeros, that wouldn't make sense. I also know that two times 46, well, two times 50 is 100. So two times 46, I knew it was gonna be a little bit less um, than 100. So this matches really well. 2 times 46 couldn't just be 9 and 66 um, hundredths because 9 is way too small for 2 times 46. But then just to double check to make sure I'm absolutely 100%, 1,000% confident in my answer, I just went ahead and multiplied it out using the standard algorithm. When I did, I got to an answer of 966. Then I remembered I had one digit after the decimal point right here. So I put in my decimal point after the one digit to get me to an answer of 96 and 6 tenths. If you also got 96 and 6 tenths, nice work. You're on your way to check five. Go ahead and give yourself a check for problem five. And one more. I did say six problems today. Last one together. So right now you have a great set of notes where you have questions one, two, three, four, five, and six written down with those correct answers. On your independent practice, you're going to have different numbers, but the questions are going to look really similar. So if you have great notes, this is really going to help you out. All right. Last question. All right. Looks like just a straight up division question. What is the quotient? Nine and 60 hundredths divided by four. We've talked about two different ways of solving a problem like this. I'm curious which one you use. Go ahead on your own. Let's see what you can do. If you can solve this today, you are in fantastic shape for your test tomorrow. More importantly, you're in fantastic shape for me to know you are ready to go um, to sixth grade, um, being able to divide these decimals. Go ahead and try it on your own, and then we'll come back together and check in to see what we got. All right, take 20 more seconds. I solved it in both ways. You just need to have one way of solving it that this works. You could have either um, pretended that this decimal wasn't there and thought of it as 960 divided by four and then added it back in, or you could have created an equivalent expression. All right, let's take a look at what are a couple different ways of solving it. In my first example of solving it, I 
just pretended that this decimal wasn't here, kind of like we do with multiplication. And so I thought of it as 960 divided by 4. After multiplying by 100, by 100, and by 40, I got to a total, um, to a total product of 960. So then I added up the numbers I multiplied, and at first that gave me 240. But I knew that 9 and 6 tenths divided by 4 isn't really 240 because I'd taken out that decimal in just my dividend, but I didn't change anything about my divisor. So I knew, just like with multiplication, I counted my um, digits after the decimal point, 1, 2. I knew I needed to move my decimal point back in one, two places. So I got to an answer of two and four tenths, or I could read it as two and 40 hundredths. That matches a good estimate because um, I know eight divided by four is two. So nine and a little bit more divided by four is going to be a little bit more than two. That's one way you could have done it. <clears throat> Another way you could have done it is if you just wanted to go right into an equivalent expression. If you wanted to move the decimal point over two times in our dividend and two times in our divisor, and think of this as 960 divided by 400. Now in this situation, I know whatever I get as my final answer, I'm not gonna need to move the decimal point because whatever 960 divided by 400 is, is going to be exactly the same as nine and six tenths divided by four because they're those equivalent expressions. So what I did is I did, now I did, well, 400, I only multiply by one to get me to 400, multiplied by one again, I was left with a difference of 160. I knew I couldn't do 400 times one or a number bigger than one to get me to um, 160, so I actually had to multiply by a decimal. If 400 times four is 1,600, and I move my decimal over one time, 400 times four tenths would be 160. Now when I go to add up my numbers on the side, I get two and four tenths. I don't need to worry about moving my decimal point because I'd already created an equivalent expression. We got the same thing for both of our answers. If you got two and four tenths, or you could have written it as two and 40 hundredths, you have earned your final check. Go ahead and give yourself that last check. Great job, well done. If you got six out of six correct in this practice right now, you are in fantastic shape. If you did not get six out of six correct in this practice right now, um, but then corrected them, you are also in great shape. Either way, you should now have a great piece of paper that you can use, a great set of notes that you can use as you go back and do your independent practice. This will really help. This will help solidify for your test tomorrow. Nice work. This is our first test um, after uh, online learning. I cannot wait to see how well you do. This is a test. I want you to think of it tomorrow just like a test um, in just like a test in any um, in any class. If we were there in person, it will go into your grades like a test. Cannot wait to celebrate really, really great scores. Um, tomorrow you will have a short video with directions of how to log into your test, and then the rest of the time is just your test. Before I send you off to do your independent practice, I do just have one last thing I need to share with you. It is about Watson. Um, Watson, during all this uh, social distancing, and we've been spending a lot of time um, at our house, not going anywhere. Um, it's been so nice, so we like to sit outside, and he loves to read when we're sitting outside. Now, Watson loves the entire Harry Potter series, um, but he and I actually disagree about which is the best Harry Potter book. He thinks that the second Harry Potter book is the best, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. He thinks that one is the most dramatic, the most exciting, um, plus his favorite character is Hermione, and she's like the big hero in this one. So he just loves um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now, I disagree. I don't think that's the very best Harry Potter book, um, but that's okay. We can have difference of opinion. So last time we were sitting outside, and reading, enjoying the sun, um, making sure to stay away from other people. He's doing a lot of Harry Potter reading. 
and he loves to read excuse me, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. That is the second Harry Potter book in the series. Make sure you remember that. Watson loves that second Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. All right. That is all I have for you for today. Um, make sure you are completing your independent practice, getting it turned in on time so I can add those Vista virtual points. I cannot wait to see um, when I check in tomorrow who is our new leader. Has anyone overtaken Emmanuel with his 20 points or overtaken Madeline at Maryvale? Um, lots of opportunities to come to reteach today, to office hours today, um, to social lunch today to keep earning those points. All right, scholars, I will see you tomorrow.